day. And so to just to kind of introduce, Tompkins Conservation believes the world can be more wild, beautiful and equitable. They protected primeval forests and national parks, helped missing species come home and campaigned to keep threatened rivers wild and free. So rewilding is a really important, a key approach to conservation with Rewilding Chile and Rewilding Argentina becoming independent offspring nonprofits, um, of which Tompkins Conservation is a strategic collaborator. So this is what we're gonna to explore today, meeting representatives from both programs to share a little bit of the work they're doing to protect Patagonia. So I'm gonna introduce both of our speakers now, uh, and then we're gonna start with one program and transition to the second. So. We have Deanna Friedrich joining us today. She is the Patagonia Azul Parks and Communities Coordinator with Rewilding Argentina. Deanna is a naturalist and adventurer. She received a degree in nature conservation in South Africa that led her to work in several nature reserves in Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Tanzania. She worked as a field technician with Rewilding Argentina's projects to reintroduce giant anteaters and red and green macaws. So let's say a quick hi now. Let's bring her in. Hey, Deanna, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, and we're going to have you take over in just a moment. But I want to introduce your colleague first. So just bear with me for a second. I'm now going to bring in Marcella um, um, Quiroz. She is leads the strategies and partnerships team of Rewilding Chile, born in Santiago. Marcella studied Hispanic American literature at the University of Chile and journalism at the Catholic University. Uh, of Chile. She's a rewilding, uh, joined the team in 2016 um, and has worked over a decade on different projects related to tourism and conservation in Chile and Patagonia. So I'm going to bring her in for a quick hello. Hey, Marcella, how are you? Hi, nice to be here. Nice to see you, Joe. Hola, Diana. All right. Very cool. So great to have you joining us live today. I'm going to tuck you backstage for a few minutes. Uh, but we're going to visit with you shortly. Diana, it's so great to have you with us today, uh, representing uh, Rewilding Argentina. Uh, and yeah, if you're ready, we'll let you take over for a little bit. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm feeling very, very honored to be here with you representing Rewilding Argentina. So, Diana, can I just pause yeah. you just for a second? The, the yeah. audio isn't coming through. Uh, really great on the microphone right now. Are you using a headset? No, I'm not. Uh, I'll try this one. Yeah, maybe try and plug in and see if we can get the microphone a little better. For whatever reason, it sounds almost like you're underwater. Uh, can you hear me better now? Oh, wow, that is perfect. That is so good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great, so I'll start again. Uh, so I feel very, very honored to be here. Uh, representing Rewilding Argentina and two of the great projects that this organization is carrying out in my home country. I am right now talking to you from southern South America in the region uh, that they call Patagonia. I've been living here for a few years. Uh, they feel like a lifetime. And in the past three years, I've been coordinating the Patagonia Sul project at the Wild Coast in Camarones. Um, I will talk about a bit uh, of two projects uh, from Rewilding Argentina, the Patagonia Sul project in the south, and then another one in the north that's called the Iberá Park. I'll start in the south, where in fact, uh, we are working in the very area that Poppy was talking about yesterday in the very first presentation of this festival about the penguins. Uh, way before we arrived, scientists like Poppy and organizations like the Global Penguin Society worked very hard and achieved that the UNESCO designated this area as a biosphere reserve. It's actually a very, very large biosphere reserve that is called Patagonia Sul. And it encompasses more than 3 million hectares on land and at the ocean. So we, as Rewilding Argentina, we work within that framework with the same name, Patagonia Sul, which means Blue Patagonia. And we work on mainly laws that enhance the protection of biodiversity around here within the area, uh, especially with threats like the fishing industry and bottom trawling, which affect this area very much. Then also restoring ecosystems that have been heavily affected by human activity through, through rewilding. 
and then also working with the community to very slowly transition towards a local and regenerative co culture. Um, we have recorded a video in case the Wi-Fi failed, which happens very often around here. So I'll leave you with that, uh, which is mainly about the community actions that we do and how we work with the local economy. And then I'll be very happy to answer any questions you might have. In Patagonia Sul, we are part of the community of Camarones. Camarones is a tiny and very isolated town right on the edge of the wild Atlantic Ocean in Patagonia. We envision a future where organizations and community groups and entrepreneurs and social innovators work together towards a future where the culture is a regenerative force instead of a destructive one. And the economy, a local economy based on abundance and regeneration. We also started creating more ways to connect to the ocean. Although Camarones sits right on the beach, many people don't have a good relationship with the ocean. So through the Ocean Club, we started teaching kids and even adults how to swim and to snorkel. And a whole new world opened up to them, the underwater world. We also started organizing beach cleanups with a local group that calls itself Friends of the Ocean in order to educate about just how much plastic floats around in our ocean and washes up to the beaches that seem so pristine and so untouched. And then we are also working on creating alternatives for the economy. A new economy that is based on a profound understanding of the functions and processes that sustain the life of ecosystems on this earth. Based also on the understanding of our interconnection and interdependence. These alternatives include regenerative ocean farming and the production of local, organic, agroecological vegetables and also regenerative grazing planning on the land that surrounds us here. We firmly believe that our collective narrative of who we are and what future we want affects the future that we create and that the world as we know it is a result of how we relate to each other and to the natural processes and the ecosystems that surround us. We need them to be vibrant and functional and healthy and as diverse as they can be. Las granjas marinas regenerativas son sistemas productivos basados en el ecosistema. Se pueden cultivar tanto moluscos como algas y la idea es hacer un conjunto de sistemas donde todos los nutrientes que se generan con las heces de moluscos, por ejemplo, sean aprovechados por las algas. La principal función que tienen las granjas marinas regenerativas es establecer sistemas de cultivo que apunten a aprovechar los nutrientes disponibles al mismo tiempo que permiten secuestrar dióxido de carbono de la atmósfera, lo que contribuye a mitigar los efectos del cambio climático, como así también la disminución de la acidez de los océanos. Lo que se busca es fortalecer el ecosistema y beneficiarlo y al mismo tiempo que se lo torna más productivo. La importancia que tienen las granjas Justamente es que se está aprovechando el mar como un medio productivo sin afectar el ecosistema y generamos proteínas de muy alta calidad con contenidos grasos realmente bajos y también tenemos por otro lado lo que son las proteínas derivadas de las algas que tienen aportes significativos de omega 3 que tiende a reforzar lo que es el sistema inmune. Las formas de cultivo son sistemas verticales tendidos en el mar y esencialmente consisten en cuerdas sintéticas que sostienen estructuras de cultivo que nos permiten tener conectados de alguna forma todo lo que son los moluscos. Uno de los casos más reconocidos de granjas marinas es la de Green Wave, que es un productor de pequeña escala en un primer momento y hoy en día tiene como principal objetivo fortalecer todo lo que es la agricultura regenerativa marina a lo largo del mundo y ya cuenta con más de 100 proyectos encaminados. El Club del Mar es un programa que empezamos hace dos años más o menos cuando identificamos que faltaba mucho en actividades que conectaran a lo que son los jóvenes del pueblo y a los niños con el tema del mar, con disfrutarlo desde otro lado, con conocer qué es lo que hay abajo del agua. Entonces 
decidimos empezar a hacer este programa para que ellos se puedan acercar mediante el snorkel, el kayak, el buceo y actividades acuáticas eh, a conocer la biodiversidad marina y obviamente a que sean los primeros guardianes para poder conservarla. Actividades como las del Club del Mar en realidad eh, tienen un trasfondo de, que tiene que ver con nuestro objetivo de que, por ejemplo, en este caso la comunidad de camarones eh, pueda volver a ver y a valorar todo lo que tiene enfrente, todo este mar que ofrece un montón de posibilidades, no solo desde la belleza, sino también desde las oportunidades, por ejemplo, de eh, generar futuros eh, emprendimientos turísticos para que la gente que viene acá a Camarones pueda disfrutar todo lo que tiene para ofrecer. Por ejemplo, nosotros con el Club del Mar esperamos generar a futuro eh, guardianes que quieran ser emprendedores y tener un emprendimiento de kayak o de operadores de buceo, es un poco revalorizar todo lo que tienen y también mostrarlo con orgullo y, y querer compartirlo con, con el resto de, de la gente. El Club del Mar en 5 o 10 años lo veo como un programa que pueda tener diferentes deportes, eh, desde navegación a vela, kayak, eh, clínicas de buceo, que se den cursos, eh, obviamente también que se puedan dar cursos pequeños sobre biodiversidad marina, más específicos, fotografía subacuática, no sé, lo veo como algo con muchas más aristas para disfrutarlo. All right, very, very cool. As a, as a diver for well over a decade, I am very biased to the ocean. I love uh seeing those images seeing that 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 protection work that's happening and i do want to share a link here uh i popped it up a, a, earlier in the video but a link to the instagram if, if people want to follow along learn more uh about the project and um yeah wow i i diana do you do you manage to get out on the water often yes we do we do get out very often and it's really wonderful how much wildlife you can see um, not only diving, you see dolphins and whales and sea lions and penguins everywhere, especially between October and May. All right. I'm going to make a mental note on my calendar here that that's the time to come down and get into the water. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right. Very cool. Well, I know you have a second program to highlight, so uh, we'll let you introduce it. And we've got another great video. Okay, so the second project is further north in Argentina, in the Corrientes province, and uh, that's the oldest project from rewilding Argentina in Argentina. Um, it's in a huge wetland that they call Ibera, and for many, many years that wetland has been completely uh, devastated. All the wildlife has been hunted out, and in the past 25 years, rewilding Argentina has started um, revaluing that ecosystem as a very important area for biodiversity and mainly working on nature tourism and reintroduc reintroducing all the species that have been lost in the in the past hundred years. Um, they're very, very beautiful cases of success of reintroducing animals and seeing how the ecosystems respond. And last year there were or even, no, I think February this year, there were huge wildfires affecting this ecosystem, which had obviously very bad effects on the, on the ecosystem and some, some areas. But also we learned that really diversity gives this ecosystem its resilience and how boosting it has helped it recover quite quickly. And yeah, I'll let you watch the video and then afterwards we'll talk, talk a bit about what we learned with these wildfires and mainly. En el norte de Iberá trabajamos en la reintroducción del guacamayo rojo, el muitú, el pecarí de collar y los hormigueros gigantes. Como parte de la restauración de Iberá, también trabajamos con las comunidades locales acompañando su desarrollo económico. Buscando fomentar economías basadas en el turismo y la observación de fauna y que sean prácticas amigables con el medio ambiente. Donde las comunidades locales puedan cuidar este ecosistema completo y sano y a la vez beneficiarse de ellos, mostrando la naturaleza que tienen para que sean ellos los protagonistas. Eh... Estás volando chimangos. Pensé que eran guacamayos en un momento. 
Este verano en Corriente fue muy particular, ya que veníamos de dos años con sequías muy intensas y altas temperaturas, lo que generó incendios con magnitudes y dimensiones muy grandes. Casi un mes estuvimos combatiendo el fuego. Afectó casi un 80% de nuestra superficie. Y arrasó con más de 170.000 hectáreas del Gran Parque Ibera. Afectó a los jaulones que utilizamos para los proyectos de reintroducción, a nuestro centro de operaciones en el lugar y a la mayoría de la infraestructura que teníamos en la reserva. En particular, en el proyecto Guacamayo, el fuego llegó cuando estábamos en plena temporada reproductiva. Tuvimos que evacuar a todos los pichones que habían nacido en la temporada junto con sus padres. Los tuvimos que llevar a un lugar seguro en el centro de Aguará para poder tratarlos, ya que estaban enfermos a causa de, del humo. En total, evacuamos a cuatro pichones, eh, de los cuales dos lamentablemente no pudieron sobrevivir y murieron por los efectos del humo en, en sus pulmones. Hemos tenido dos animales que sufrieron quemaduras. Uno es un oso hormiguero que tuvo quemaduras tanto en sus miembros, en las patas delanteras como en las patas traseras y en la trompa. Tuvimos que intervenirlo y llevarlo al centro de rescate de los osos en la estación biológica de Corrientes, donde después de pasar dos meses de tratamientos, de eh, transfusión de sangre, de medicaciones, con alegría podemos decir que eh, la semana pasada fue liberado nuevamente y desde entonces anda caminando por el inmenso bosque que tenemos en el portal Chabalito. Días después del gran incendio que tuvimos, comenzamos rápidamente a trabajar en toda la restauración del portal, en los jaulones que fueron quemados, alambrados y apoyándonos en los proyectos de reintroducción de guacamayos y de muitú. Hoy más que nunca se hace evidente la importancia de trabajar con especies como el guacamayo rojo y el muitú, que se consideran regeneradores de bosques, ya que consumen frutos y semillas de, de los montes nativos y mediante la dispersión pueden regenerar los bosques. Los incendios resaltaron la importancia de tener ecosistemas sanos, completos y funcionales, ya que son más resilientes frente a estos eventos catastróficos que cada vez van a ser más frecuentes como consecuencia del cambio climático. All right, let's bring you back in here, Diana. I'm going to share a link here right now. I didn't want to share it during the presentation because I didn't want to cover the captions, but there's a link here to help donate and and uh, and support that work. So I do want to make sure that we share that link out uh, for people to see. Obviously, you want to visit um, to find out more uh, and make those donations because donations are so critical for the work uh, that is being done. And it is great work. And I know that because there's there's people singing your praises in the chat right now saying the work of rewilding Argentina is fantastic, especially after the wildfires in January, how quickly uh, you know you guys acted to protect the species there. So lots of praise coming in via the chat for these two amazing projects. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it has been wild, the fires, um, but we, we got so much support from the community. And, and yeah, we feel very, very happy that Many people have known about this area for so long and now they, they were able to really help. What we've learned is that we need to restore uh, the fencing of Ibera Park now and they, we don't have to use wooden poles anymore, not only because we don't want to uh, cut down trees to make fences, but also because they burn and wildfires like these in this climate change era um, might be very usual now. And, So we have to invent something else. And also that fences are very, very important because now domestic cattle is invading these parks. So that is very important. And that is why we need the support of, of the community. Absolutely. And then, and then again, how important it is to have biodiversity because biodiversity builds resilience and makes these ecosystems faster at recovering from these yep. disasters. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Resilient ecosystems, biodiversity ecosystems bounce back quicker. That's just, yeah. just the way it works. All right. Well, Diana, I'm going to tuck you backstage temporarily while we bring your colleague in. Uh, and we're going to okay. explore uh, a, a, different, uh, a different project, a different country. But we will see you again shortly. So Thank you so just, much. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to do a little switcheroo here. We're going to bring uh, Marcella in. Hey, Marcella, how are you? Hello. Fine. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, my name is Marcela Quiroz from Rival in Chile, and I am speaking from the beautiful and rainy Puerto Vara city, which is the town where I live and actually is the gate of entrance to Chilean Patagonia. Uh, since 2007, I have been working in different projects related with tourism and conservation to try to protect this amazing place, Patagonia, which is truly one of the last wild places that we have on Earth. Uh, after many years exploring the territory, I have been lucky enough to witness all this beauty. And when you do so, there's really no turning back. It's kind of like a moral imperative to try to protect the places that you love so deeply. And that's exactly what we do at Rewild in Chile. We try to reverse the extinction at, and climate crisis uh, using three main strategies. First, we protect the territory under the maximum possible conservation categories that we have in our country, which is national park on the land and marine parks on the water. We also restore damaged ecosystem and help them regain its natural balance again. And we also connect people with, with nature. We believe that conservation is not successful unless communities are profoundly involved. We want them to be proud of the territory and become the first line of defense uh, of, of, of this amazing territory. So after three uh, decades of work, we have uh, helped create seven national parks and expand three others. Uh, how have we done this? We have uh, donated over a million acres to the Chilean state which has been leveraged by 11 million acres of, of land. So if you add uh, the, the, the national parks that we have he crea helped create with the already existing national parks, you have the root of parks of Chilean Patagonia. This is our conservation landscape. And uh, we are speaking about a 1700 mile scenic route that spans from one third of Chile, crosses 17 national parks, 60 gateway communities, and protects 28 million acres of wilderness. This is a mosaic of beauty composed by wetlands, temperate rainforests, subantarctic forests, uh, ice fields, and one of the largest fuel systems in the world. And actually, it's a green land for the planet. Um, it's one of the largest carbon sink of South America, and it stores three times more, more carbon per hectare than the Amazon forest. But what is underneath this conservation vision, the root of parks of Patagonia? We want national parks to be seen as an investment, not as an expense. And we want to present them as an alternative of economic development for surrounding communities versus extract extractive activities that see nature as a mer merely resource. So uh, for doing so, we have helped create and donated to the Chilean government two ready-to-use parks, Patagonia National Park and Pumalín National Parks. Ready-to-use parks because we crafted all the public access, campgrounds, trails, lodging, because at the end of the day, you will only protect what you love and you will only love what you know. So this is a, an, an emblematic case. And the video that I wanted to, to show you now and share with all of you explains a little bit the rewilding process that has been taking place in Patagonia National Park uh, and how we have helped turn a sheep ranch into a national park. Actually, Netflix recently launched a series of the greatest national parks of the world narrated by Barack Obama, and Patagonia National Park is highlighted in one of these videos. Uh, we are very proud because one entire chapter is dedicated to the parks of Chilean Patagonia. And Cristian Saucedo, our wildlife director, uh, was crucial uh, in supporting the filming crew. And I want you to invite to see this video that narrates uh, a little bit the, the, the rewilding process that have been taking place in Patagonia National Park. Mi nombre es Cristian Saucedo y he estado trabajando estos últimos 15 años en la zona del Parque Nacional Patagonia, en el sur de Chile. Rewilding básicamente es eh, reasilvestrar, renaturalizar, eh, es volver a lo original. De alguna forma, eh, restablecer las relaciones 
y las diferentes interacciones que existen en la naturaleza, donde todas las especies juegan un rol importante y todas las especies tienen interacciones con otras. Es decir, ninguna de estas especies está por obra del azar en la naturaleza. Acá en el Parque Patagonia, eh, entre los proyectos de rewilding que hemos desarrollado, ha estado aquel eh, dirigió el monitoreo del puma como predador tope y clave del ecosistema. Eh, hemos desarrollado monitoreos permanentes respecto a la población de Guanaco, Censo, y la iniciativa más reciente es la relacionada a la conservación del ñandú, a, a prevenir o a evitar la extinción local y desarrollar un programa de recuperación y fortalecimiento poblacional. Ha sido muy emocionante eh, eh, el aprendizaje que hemos tenido con el trabajo del Ñandú eh, desde la primera vez eh, que incubamos eh, un, un huevo o vimos el nacimiento del primer charito. Eh, ha sido una emoción muy grande. De alguna forma sentimos que trabajamos con eh, un pequeño dinosaurio, un dinosaurio viviente, esos tremendos huevos, esas patas de dinosaurio. Y la verdad no nos deja de emocionar en cada temporada reproductiva cuando vemos el primer huevo, el primer charito que nace, la verdad que, que nos llena de emoción, nos llena de esperanza de que, de que cada uno de esos representa una, una oportunidad, una posibilidad de recuperación del ñandú, de avanzar con el rewilding acá en el Parque Nacional Patagonia. Ver que en el fondo las personas disfrutan viniendo al parque, interactuando con los guanacos, eh, pudiendo observar cumas y toda la vida silvestre del lugar, eh, es el mejor regalo y el mejor ejemplo de éxito de todo el trabajo de rewilding que se ha desarrollado aquí en el Parque Nacional Patagonia. What a great clip. I'm just going to pop the video out here. And uh, as we chat for a moment, I'm going to share a couple of links here. So I'm going to start with this one there. Uh, yeah, what a cool cl uh, clip. What an amazing project to be part of and to be featured on that Netflix documentary. I'm sure everybody's really excited. Uh, the whole team must yes. be really excited. Yes, it's, it, we are so proud to see the national parks showcasing in, in, in this visibility worldwide and the images of the guanacos are amazing. Imagine that 15 years ago, if you have like a time capsule, this will be a sheep ranch with 30,000 sheep, degraded um, grasslands. And now you can see these guanacos running all over, uh, ecosystem recovering. So it's, it's actually a story of hope, uh, of yeah. how if we work in collaboration, we can turn the clock in the other direction. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to pop my screen share back up because you sent so many great images through to me, here to me. So I want to make sure <laughs> that we share some of these images while, while you're, you're presenting as well. So I know you have another uh, project to tell us about. So I'll let you take over for a little yes. bit. Yes, thank you, Joe. Um, in this rewilding work that we have been uh, doing for almost 30 years, uh, one of the main efforts have been to try to save uh, the Wemul deer out of the extinction. The Wemul deer, it's an endemic and Patagonian deer, actually it's the southernmost deer of the world, uh, which plays a key ecological role in Patagonia. It's like the gardener of the forest. Uh, unfortunately, uh, its numbers have been reduced to roughly 1,500 individuals, which represent less than 1% of the original population. So really the clock is ticking for, for this emblematic species, which is actually really related with the Chilean and Patagonian identity. It's uh, highlighted in our coat of arms. So losing these species, as you know, in any extinction uh, case, uh, it's more than losing the species itself. 
Wemul currently lives in very fragmented populations and uh, dispersed in pockets of, of uh, on, on the territory of the root of parks and also in Argentina. And through these years, we have been working to try to reestablish uh, the corridors to connect the pockets of, of populations, reduce the threats, uh, which are mainly reduction of habitat, competition with livestock, um, exotic species like the uh, wild boar and the red deer, poaching and dogs. Uh, and we also want to promote the active management uh, to boost it, to boost the population of, of these uh, emblematic species. And actually, I'm proud to announce that we are about to uh, build the first uh, rescue and rehabilitation center for the Wemul deer in Cerro Castillo National Park, uh, with the vision of uh, uh, establishing a, a breeding center uh, in the in the midterm. This, uh, all this work that we have been doing, starting in Patagonia National Park in the video that you just saw, and the, and the efforts of reestablishing the Wemul population al along the route of parks, is part of our National Wemul Corridor Initiative, which is a public-private collaboration collaborative initiative uh, that is try to reestablish key ecological corridors for the Wemul deer. And this involves not only national parks, public lands, but also private lands working with the farmers to promote wildlife friendly practices and with our colleagues in Argentina to reestablish transboundary corridors. So it's a collaborative uh, action that we are uh, developing in all these vertebral spine of the root of parks of Chile and Patagonia. And actually the little fellow, the Wemul deer that you are seeing here, uh, was recently highlighted as one of the 20 key manuals for ecosystem restoration. This means that focusing our rewarding efforts in the Wemul deer, you will generate a domino effect that will impact uh, different species uh, like the Magallanic woodpecker, fungus, uh, Magallanic uh, endemic orchids, and so on. So really our efforts uh, to saving the Wemul deer out of the extinction is related to try to reestablish the, the, the ecosystem and help the ecosystem to have uh, its, its balance again. Uh, this is a 24-7 uh, job, uh, and it's done for by a team of Wemul experts. I call them Wemul whisperers. Uh, and the beautiful thing is that most of them were former um, workers of the sheep ranch. So they have this they have realigned their gaucho experience towards the protection of the Wemul deer. So this is a very, very nice example of how rewilding process is also an interior process uh, related with pride, local identity. Uh, so I would like you to uh, see the daily routine of Chino, or Cristian Rivera, who is our Wemul whisperer, uh, monitoring the Wemul subpopulation in Patagonia National Park in the, in the, north, uh, the northwest area of the park, which is an area which is barely uh, severely affected by uh, the presence of cows, um, which are competing um, with the habitat by the Wemul and blocking its dispersal. So let's see what Chino does um, in Patagonia National Park. Mi nombre es Cristian Rivera y trabajo en el Parque Patagonia desde el 2006 más o menos en monitoreo de Wemules. Mi rutina diaria es más o menos rastreo, acercamiento de los animales y trabajar con trampas cámaras. Un día típico de trabajo es me levanto en la mañana alrededor de las 6, 6 y media, me tomo unos buenos mates, un buen desayuno y empiezo a arreglar mi equipo de, de trabajo que son pilas, GPS, antena, el receptor y ahí parto hacia mi lugar de trabajo al monitoreo. Yo siento que vivir en medio de la naturaleza es estar tranquilo, más que nada y aprender cosas de la misma naturaleza, de los animales, de todos los animales que uno está monitoreando en el lugar. Encontrarme con los huemules me produce emoción, alegría y de poder monitorearlos, sacarles fotos y de saber más que nada cómo, cómo viven. 
como es la especie. Antes trabajaba en ganadería, trabajaba en otras cosas totalmente distintas a, a fauna y a, y a la vida silvestre. La fauna, más que nada, que permanezca en el lugar para mantener el ecosistema, para mantener las especies que están en extinción y las que se están cada vez perdiendo. All right, let's take that video down there. And thank you for that clip. It's so great to see kind of the day in the life of, of somebody who's working so hard on one of these conservation projects. Yes, it's a 24-7 job. Uh, the threats does not stop. And the job for trying to save the Wemula out of extinction, it's, it's you know, it's, it's very important for us and for the world. Absolutely. Every species we lose is something that we can't get back. Every species matters. Every species plays a role in their ecosystem. Um, we can't play games taking pieces in and out. Exactly. And also it's very important for the cultural identity. So we mm. lose a part of ourselves when we lose one species. I think that's very important to highlight as well. All right. Let's bring Deanna back in here for a moment. Uh, hey, Deanna, uh, two amazing organizations, offspring of uh, Tompkins Conservation, and it's it's awesome to see two programs flourishing uh, into two uh, independent organizations, both doing incredible work in Patagonia and protecting one of the most beautiful places on the planet. I think you both agree with me. Uh, absolutely amazing. And, you know, one thing that was coming in through the chat was volunteers. Are there volunteer opportunities with the organizations? Yes. Uh... Here in Patagonia Sul, we are looking for volunteers. And also, I know in Iberá Park, there's a very old volunteer program where there are many more different opportunities for any any person who wants to join. Awesome. Yes, in, in the case of Chile, in Patagonia National Park, we offer internship programs for helping us, particularly with the Darwin's RIA program. And we are going to open a volunteer program for Cerro Castillo, where we are going to start building the Wemul Rescue and Rehabilitation Center. So we are going to keep you posted. We need more hands in the territory. Keep us posted, absolutely. We, abs I mean, it's it's an absolute pleasure to be able to share both of these organizations, both stories of rewilding Patagonia. Last year, it was great and in a year the progress that was made is, is so exciting so it's 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 really fun to see year-on-year -year progress see success see the community being involved um you two are doing great work and i know you have a whole team behind you as well who who make everything possible yes yes definitely the yes. team is everything <laughs> excellent well Deanna, Joe, and, uh, uh, before i leave oh. yeah go ahead sorry no okay before I leave, I, I don't want to leave behind uh, to mention that we are very excited to announce a new project in the Magallanes region. Uh, we are working for create new national parks down there uh, because we want to, we are working not to cons only to consolidate the legacy of Douglas and Christine Tompkins, but also to expand it. So uh, we have some new parks on the pipeline uh, in, in, in the Magallanes region, and we are hoping to create uh, national parks on land and marine parks on the water. So we are going to expand the protection of, of Patagonia, and that's what we, we wanted to share with you as well. All right. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that with us. It's always great to hear about more, more space being set aside for parks. That is just absolutely great news. All right. Well, Deanna and Marcella, thank you so much for being with us. A huge shout out to Tompkins Conservation and Rewilding Argentina and Rewilding Chile uh, for being with us. Thank you for putting together those beautiful videos. Uh, and of course, you can check them out uh, in the playlist as we get the playlist up or even just rewind, which we're playing right now if you want to check it out again. So thank you so much, Marcella. Thank you so much, Deanna. Uh, and I can't wait to hear an update. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Thanks. Nice. You're welcome. All right. Thank you.